was given to the proconsul of the region, the Roman governor, Pilate, at the time. So early in the morning, you can picture all these religious leaders with their royal robes, their holy priestly robes, they're escorting Jesus. They are taking Jesus to Pilate, the governor. Now, they didn't really care about Pilate. They had no love for him. But they wanted to appease Pilate to sentence Jesus to death. And so they came up with an accusation that might appeal to Pilate. They said, Oh, Pilate, this man makes a commotion in society. He's a troublemaker. Oh, Pilate, he is teaching people we must not give taxes to Caesar, our king. Oh, Pilate, this guy is saying all these things because he claims to be the Christ. And Pilate, do you know, Christ means king in our culture. You know, Pilate was listening to this accusation, and he was troubled. 
because he didn't find this as a much accusation, much of an accusation to sentence the person to death. In fact, Pilate asks this question, one question directly to Jesus after hearing the accusation. He says, are you the king of the Jews? In Pilate's mind, a king of a Jew, someone that claims to be a king of the Jews, was not a troublemaker for the empire of Rome. In fact, in the first century, it is said in history that there were over 10 messiahs just in the first century. Oh, just the crazy guy and not much trouble. Pilate thought nothing of this. So after questioning Jesus, he came to the conclusion, this man is not worthy of death, and he was about to let him go. But the religious leader were not those to back off. They uh, uh, accumulated more evidence against Jesus. They said, this man has been teaching false doctrine from Galilee to all Judea and even to here in Jerusalem. Now Pilate was thinking in his mind, how can I get out of this situation? But he found an escape as, they, as he heard the last sentence of the high priest. Oh, he's from Galilee? This is the Jewish festival, isn't it? This time is the time of Passover. And Herod, King Herod must be in town. Now King Herod was one of the regional kings in the northern part of Palestine. And so, oh, if he's from Galilee, we need to send him to Pilate. And so he is sent over to Pilate. Uh, he is sent over to Herod. Now Herod questions Jesus and he's amused. He's amazed. He wanted to see Jesus, this famous guy. But after getting no satisfaction from Jesus, he came to the same conclusion, I cannot sentence anything against him. And instead, he put these mocking royal clothes on the body of Jesus and gave him back to Pilate. And that's the story tonight. As we ponder on this story tonight, we have to ask this question. Why did Jesus have to suffer so much? Why did he have to be, be behind bars, arrested, and tortured, and abused? Why did the religious leader hate Jesus so much to the extent of not just accusing him of sin, but to accuse him and to sentence him to death, to Caesar, to Pilate? Why was our Lord Jesus under suffering. Why did he have to suffer so much this week? We find a recurring message in the scripture yesterday and today. I'm going to read a couple of verses here and you probably can pick it up what it is. Luke chapter 22 verse 70 says, So they all said, Are you the Son of God then? And he said to them, Yes, you say that I am. Next chapter, verse 2. And they began to accuse him, saying, We found this man misleading our nation and forbidding us to give tribute to Caesar and saying that he himself is Christ. Verse 3. And Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Last verse, verse 11. And Herod with his soldiers treated him with contempt and mocked him, then arraying him in splendid, splendid clothing, he sent him back to Pilate. Herod was making fun of Jesus with royal clothing. The recurring theme is that Jesus is the Son of God. He is the Christ. He is the King. The Jewish leaders, deep in their hearts, understood this. They looked at all the facts and they could not deny the fact that Jesus could be the Son of God as he claimed. But they didn't want him to be the king. Why? Because if Jesus is the king, it meant the end to their kingship as leaders of the people, these religious leaders. So they could not, they would not have Jesus as their king. The solution was to get rid of Jesus. I wonder if today we're experiencing the same thing in our culture. Our world hates Jesus. Let's admit it. The world hates Jesus with the heartbeat. And it is the same reason that the world hates. It's the same reason as the religious leaders 2,000 years ago. 
If Jesus is the Son of God, if Jesus is the King, that means the end of culture being our King. They lose their influence. Maybe that's why the world is trying to get rid of the term Christmas. And during Easter time like this, instead of seeing the empty tomb of Jesus, the story of empty tomb of Jesus, we see more Easter bunnies. The world cannot and will not acknowledge Jesus Christ as King. But I want to go a little bit further. By chance, are you and I who claim to be Christian, do we also sometimes want to push Jesus aside from the center of our lives? Do we also want to be our own king, our own master, and make our own decision and have possession for our, ourselves and live for oneself? Because if we acknowledge Jesus as the true king in our lives, we might not be king. Do we have that tendency to push him away? Brothers and sisters, this Holy Week, I pray that you and I would renew, refresh our heart before God. Jesus is the Son of God. Amen. He is the Christ. He is the King. King Jesus. Let's remember that fact and repent and once again submit our lives to the true King who is worthy. Not locking Him up and persecuting Him even in our hearts or in our thoughts. But proclaiming Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and King this Holy Week. God bless you as you do as you pray with me tonight. Amen. As we pray tonight, I want to ask this question to you and to myself. Is Jesus really my King? Is Jesus in control of my life? Or am I still steering my life, my way? I want to pray tonight, maybe a prayer of repentance, letting down our ownership of our lives. Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is the King of our lives. Let's uh, lay down our lives to Him once again tonight and uh, ask Him to reign over us. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, we thank You for sending Your Son and having Him bear the suffering and eventually the cross for me. Father, we repent of the sin of myself being the master and Lord and King of my life. Please forgive us. Please forgive me. Help us to fix our eyes on Jesus as our only King, Savior, and Lord. We exalt you, Jesus, tonight because you have suffered. You have shed blood. You have loved for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, everyone. Good night.